Okay. So, namaste, everybody, and uh, thank you for inviting me today. So, uh, I don't know if you know Ayurveda. Do you know mm -hmm. Ayurveda? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Good. good. Um, anybody from uh, healthcare field here? No. Okay. That doesn't matter, but I just <laughs> asked. Okay. So we'll start with uh, breathing exercises first, okay? A little bit of meditation, breathing exercises, just a few minutes, not much. Just to be present here, because you probably all are working the whole day. Um, okay, please co close your eyes. And just relax your hands, your legs. Don't fold, don't fold it. And just let it go. through your mouth. Inhale. And exhale through your mouth. Okay, a few more times. Inhale. And exhale through your mouth. How do you feel? A little bit relaxed and ready for the presentation? Yes. Okay. So, uh, my name is Jaya Dapkardar and I'm a traditionally trained Ayurvedic doctor from India. Uh, I practice here in Weston and in Canaan. And um, I always talk about Ayurveda, whether you like or not. <laughs> okay. So, I have a um, small disclaimer here before we go further. Just so everybody know that this presentation is just for the educational purposes and not to use for any treatment, okay? Okay, so do you know where this Ayurveda came from? India? <laughs> yes, <Not> India. <laughs> uh, that's true. It's originated from India, but it came from our Vedas. Uh, so we have four types of Vedas. Did you hear about Vedas? Uh, Rig Veda, Yajur Veda, Sam Veda, and Atharva so Atharva Veda is all about healthcare. So it's written in those Vedic scripts at that time. 
and those scripts were all in Sanskrit. So Ayurveda is Upaveda of Atharva Veda. That means it's a branch of Atharva Veda. And at that time, the whole healthcare system was mentioned in those old scripts. And then later on, it got translated in Hindi and, and other languages as well. So, so everything related to health in those ages was in Athar Veda or was it in any other Vedas too? Any other Vedas too, so but most of the eight limbs of Ayurveda, they were, uh, they were mentioned under this Atharva Veda. Because Ayurveda is the part of Atharva Veda. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Ayurveda has all eight branches. So Ayurveda is not just the lifestyle management. It is lifestyle management and prevention, but it is not just that. It also has all these specialty branches, um, just like the modern medicine. So it has um, ENT, it has surgery, it has OBGYN, it has uh, uh, what you call it, pediatrics. So all these branches, Ayurveda also has specialty branches. Five thousand, this science is 5,000 years old. And at that time, there was no other medicine but Ayurveda. And people survived. How? They were practicing all, all the disciples of Ayurveda. So, what is the definition of Ayurveda? Ayur meaning life, and Veda means knowledge or science. So, it is a science. It, Ayurveda is a science of life. And that's why my, the, my, um, topic today is the art of living. Ayurveda is art of living. Um, so it is 5,000 years old holistic health system uh, originated uh, in India and designed to help the people to live long because this is the special chapter in Ayurveda that is not in anywhere which is the longevity. Um, and this is one of the world's oldest uh, medical system, uh, healthcare system, which now people are studying, digging in more into it. So, um, objective of Ayurveda. So, objective of Ayurveda is promotion and maintenance of health of the healthy person. So, it is more for the prevention and cure or treatment of illness of ill person. So a lot of these Ayurvedic scripts were in Sanskrit. So, so the objective of Ayurveda, it was in Sanskrit. Swastasya swastha rakshanam vyadi vinashanam. That means whoever is healthy to maintain that person's health. And if person is ill, there are still treatments in Ayurveda. So uh, basically it promotes prevention and lifestyle management because this system doesn't want you to get sick. This system wants you to balance your life with the elements. So we're going to talk about what are those elements. And Ayurveda uh, and yoga, there is a connection. Ayurveda and yoga, they're sisters. They're sister sciences. So, yoga is another disciple for healthy lifestyle. Um, but both are equally important for healthy life. So, is yoga also part of Atharva Veda? Yes. It's, is it one of the branches of Ayurveda? Yoga is a cyst, it's, it's called sister science. It is not a branch, it is included in okay. Ayurveda. Oh. It is not a special branch. No. So, when all these things were um, practiced in India 5,000 years ago, and after that, maybe our grandparents and great-grandparents, they practiced that. That time, there was not a big problem of uh, 
the sicknesses that we currently see. People knew how to balance their body. So if we all start doing that now, then the future of the healthcare ins insurance will be better. <laughs> That's why I have this picture here. Right now, the future of healthcare is on the pharmacy's hand. We have to get it on our hands. We have to be responsible of the future of life. So this is all about Ayurveda. This diagram, what you see here, is all about balancing those five elements of the nature. Those are five elements of the nature, and they are present in us too. So if we keep balance our lifestyle and those elements, then we are supposed to. So what are those five elements? Do we do you know what, what five elements are? Yeah, the <laughs> air, fire, earth, and water. Uh -huh. Air, fire, water, ether, and earth. That's called panchatattva. In in Vedanta, panchatattva, that we know. Where we came from, panchatattva. And when someone dies, goes back to panchatattva. Panchatattva may be lean hoja pai, right? Ether Akasha, right? Ether is Akasha. We will talk about it. Uh, yes, it is mentioned Ether, but Ether is Akasha in Hindi. So, what are these Panchatattvas? Because this is very important to understand these five elements and how they are based in us, in the human body. Once we know, how, how um, these uh, panchatattvas balances are imbalances and how to keep them balanced, then we know how to manage our life. So air, affecting how air affects our human physiology. What is air? This air, fire, those panchatattvas, those uh, five elements, their qualities. It's not air means air. Like, that's air. Those are the qualities among us and those are the qualities in the nature. So, all that moves in the nature, that's a quality of air. All that moves in the nature is, is air. Breathing is air. We call prana. Why we call prana? When it stops, everything stops. So you feel that air goes in and out is um, that um, element problem. air. Circulation in the, uh, like blood circulation in the body or circulation of air in the body, uh, like the, the respiration, involuntary uh, and voluntary movements or movements, those are all because of the air. So just think about it. Modern science is not gonna tell you, but this is a science, right? You, if, you, if there is no air, how you move? That's air. The historic movements. If, that, if there is no air going up and down, it won't move. It will not move what you eat, right? So that's air. Then space. Space are the cavities. Space in the air, space, akash, outside in the nature, that's space. Space inside us, whatever the hollowness, our ear, that's space mouth, nose, that space, respiratory tract, that space, or gastrointestinal tract, that's all space. So that's space. That's the quality of space. Then fire. Fire is very important. You know, we say uh, the chatter Agni. Agni is fire. If that's not good, then we don't get hungry. That's fire. The light in the solar system is fire in the nature. All the warm energy among us is fire. The body temperature is fire. Sometimes some people have normal body temperature of 98.6. Sometimes some people have more than that. Why? Because everybody's elements and the balance is different. We'll talk more about it. Then, 
thinking and intelligence. That's also fire. We talk more about it. Water. So quality of water um, in the nature, whatever the, the water in the river, water in the sea, that's water. Um, and it manifests in our body uh, in terms of secretions, gland secretions, um, digestive juices, mucous membranes, that's, that's all uh, water. And water is the vital for the all functioning of the body. If there is no uh, water in the body, it will be dry. So definitely water is the important part. Earth. Earth is the sol solidity. So like water is the fluidity, earth is the solidity. So whatever is solid in the nature is earth, whatever solid in our body is. If, if there is no solid substance in our body, there's, there will not be binding. So the binding force is all earth. Um, and that is why all our parts, body parts are holding because of that solidity. Um, and earth holds all living and non-living substances to its solid space. So earth is present in the microcosm of the human being. That's the, that's the major part. So all these great elements in the nature and among us, if they're not there, we're not there. But they are in the form of three doshas in our body. So they pair up together and form one dosha. Dosha is the element in our body. Dosha is the constitution. Dosha is the prakriti. You know, we say prakriti. My prakriti is vata and your prakriti is pitta. So that's prakriti. But then how this prakriti came from? It came from the combination of two elements. So vata came from air and space. So these are bioenergetic forces. Okay. So air and space is vata, that is the kinetic energy, energy of movement. Okay. Then pitta, pitta is the fire and water, which is thermal energy in the body. That, uh, that is responsible for generating heat in our body. And that is also responsible for the metabolic action, metabolism in, in, in us and metabolism of our thinking power too, um, which is intellect. It metabolizes into uh, intellectual mind. And kapha is earth and water. Why are we uh, talking about all this? Because the principle of Ayurveda revolves around all these three doshas. That's nothing but all these three doshas. So kapha is earth and water, which is potential energy, binding force, uh, we spoke about it. So this is uh, uh, the beautiful diagram which describes how the space and air um, in, in vata dosha, fire and water in pitta dosha, and water and earth in kapha dosha. Actually, word dosha. Or dosha is, is not uh, uh, like a good health. Dosha is, there is something dosh, right? But when it comes from birth, okay, that becomes your prakriti. That becomes your, um, by birth, that becomes your dosha, okay? So in modern science, just like in modern science, we say it's genetic, right? It came from birth, it's genetic. That's how this dosha um, from your birth is your prakriti. So you have to be always careful to balance that dosha, okay? So that's called a body constitution, prakriti. So, Kapha, Pitta, and Vata, those are the Prakritis. But it doesn't mean that your Vata Prakriti, your Pitta Prakriti, your Kapha Prakriti, that means you only have that dosha in you. No, all three doshas are present in our body because they're part of, again, five elements. All five elements are present in our body. 
um, but they are, uh, their percentage is different. Person to person, their, their percentage is different. And that is the reason. You know, we all are sitting in this room. Some people feel that this temperature is warm, right? And some people feel, no, it's so cold. Some people are wearing layers and some people are not. Why? Because everybody's uh, body temperature is different because their property is different. So that is the difference between Ayurveda and modern science because Ayurveda treats a person individual person according to their property it's not symptomatic it's not protocol uh, based you know so if you have same problem and you have same problem but still your balance is imbalance same problem that means illness but your balances and imbalances can be different very different um, so we learned all about that that's the same thing here. Uh, okay. So these three great doshas again, they have their specific expressions in human body, but in different direction, uh, different dimensions. Vata moves in the body in form of movements. When vata manifests in our mind, that's our thing. So that manifests differently in different people. So that's why we say monkey mind, right? So you're sitting here, but your thinking goes probably, you're thinking, you know, what I'm gonna eat when I go home, right? That's mind. Mind is somewhere else, right? Mind moves so fast, why? Because of what? And when it um, manifests into spiritual level, then it's called prana, because that's your feel. You feel it. When there's a prana, you feel it. When there's no prana, then people are dead. Pitta. So at somatic level, pitta in the body is our digestive power, our body temperature, that's pitta mind level is our thinking power. So when people have a uh, pitta type of prakriti, pitta type of uh, constitution, they're very intelligent because their pitta is manifested in their, in their mind. Pitta people are more intelligent. They're more like, uh, like teachers, researchers. Um, and spirit level, pitta is tejas. So those those people, they're bright. They look bright and they're thinking bright because of the uh, pitta, power of pitta. Then kapha, which has a binding force, somatic level, kapha, is, kapha binds your body, we learned that. And mind level is your memory. So it sticks there. Because of the kapha, it sticks there. When you think, you memorize, that's that's and spiritual level, it's all just, it's extracts in your body. That's your immunity. So I hope um, you understood because these are the three, it is very important to understand these three basic um, elements. That's how the body looks like. Kapha person is earthy, a little bit heavy. You can see that. Um, Pitta person, is middle type of personality, a middle body frame, and water type of personality is very thin because they're moving, they're moving fast. And kapha, they're not moving fast, but they're calm type of personality. So that's how it is by looking at the person, doesn't mean that uh, you can diagnose, you don't diagnose yourself right now, but uh, that's how it looks like. And the colors, I don't know if you Okay, so the definition of health according to Ayurveda is harmonious balance of body, mind, and soul. And that is the difference between Ayurveda and any other uh, modern medicine because whenever you go to the physician, Ayurvedic physician, they always think about all, all three of these, not only the symptoms of the body, but also mind level. 
So if there is anything imbalance in our body, that means we are sick somewhere. Illness is there. Okay. So this is the modern medicine philosophy. Body parts get treated. Always you go to the doctor, you get, you get some diagnosis, and that particular part gets treated. But a mind gets treated separately. If there is some anxiety, depression, that treats uh, they treat separately. Those, those two doctors they don't talk to each other. Two different medicines. Um, and treatment is specific to symptoms. Then treatment is scientifically passed and protocol based. So everything is check mark. You have this, you will get this. And you get these labs checked. That's not what Ayurveda does. And physician and patient relationship has very little to do. There is no relationship. Relationship is with your insurance company and pharmaceutical. Um, so I, I just thought this diagram uh, means well. So if you have migraine and you go to the doctor, uh, so pain management in modern medicine, how it works, you go to the doctor and doctor will say that, you know what, you're suffering from arrowhead, so I don't wanna give anything to you because you need to do the labs first, you need to do these tests, that, and then after the test will. But I read that will say, you know what, this is vata. Your, your migraine is due to too much vata in your body. Um, so how it works? Whenever there is imbalance, okay, there is a problem. In the nature too, vata is air, it's wind. When wind is balanced, everything is quiet in the nature. When wind is blowing 60 miles per hour, you know what happens, destruction. The same thing happens in our mind. When that vata is not balanced in our mind or, or, or body, the same thing happens. Same thing is what with water in the nature. If there is too much rain, what happens? Flood. Same thing ho happens in our body too. Too much water, we get reten water retention in the body. We have to balance it. Same thing with um, fire. You know, if is too much hot outside, what happens? Trees burn or wildfire, right? Same thing happens in our body. So uh, what is Ayurveda's philosophy of heal? First of all, body, mind, and soul should be in the harmony. If the body is sick, mind is sick, that's, the, that's Ayurveda's philosophy. And you have probably seen that. If you are sick, for some reason, you have to stomach ache or, or whatever it may be. Uh, after a while, you feel sick. You don't want to eat. Or you have headache because your mind gets sick too. If the mind is sick, people have depression, people have anxiety, what happens? They don't feel eating. Or they eat too much. right? Or something else with the body. Because it is related. And illness is living out of balance with the constitution. So if any part of the constitution's vata, pitta, kapha get out of balance, you get sick. So Ayurveda says it's not just you go to the doctor when you were really sick, but you should find out your constitution, what is your body constitution, and eat according to your constitution, eat according to the season, and your occupation also plays a part of in, in your health. So um, then what Ayurveda does? Ba balance your lifestyle and also they give some herbs to balance too. There's Ayurvedic medicine to balance. Okay. Uh, first of all, our self power of healing is important. We all have our own healing power that we don't use. Too often, we underestimate of our power of touch, smile, some kind words, listening ear, uh, listening ear, all of which have the potential to turn our life around. So balances and what's the time? So um, balances and imbalances called disease modes. Uh, imbalances called, called disease modes and 
how to balance it. So dosha vitiation is the disease mode. That means any dosha get elevated, you get into disease mode. Seasonal changes, you get dosha elevated imbalance. Age related changes, you get those imbalances. Um, so if you go to the doctor or if you know your constitution, it doesn't remain the same as your age goes up. Then AMA formation is another thing. Waste in our body, toxic substances in our body makes a difference. If we don't uh, cleanse on time to time basis, we have, uh, if some people have constipation, the AMA part, the waste part remains in our body. And that toxic sub uh, substance creates illness. Then, then it becomes obstruction in the channels. We call cholesterol, right? That's an obstruction in the channel. Because that ama, that sticky substance, is um, in your arteries, making problem. Do you have any question for now? No? It's very good. Okay. So, in the nature, we can't control that air. We can't control wind, right? But what we control to adjust the sails. That's how we have to do for our body as well. So how do you control that? With the six, the food is a medicine. So the food we eat, the, uh, that has all six tests, and those six tests are related to the elements. So every test has two elements in it. Vata, pitta, or kapha. So sweet taste, let's say sweet taste has earth and water in it, okay? So kapha people can't eat more sweet. And we kind of know that, or grandparents told, the parents told, but we don't know why, right? Um, pitta people, they can, they can eat, vata, they can eat, because if kapha people they eat, they will increase more of kapha in their body. And that is the reason when the kids have cough or we have cough, we say, you know, don't eat sweets. Um, sour. Sour taste has earth and fire in it, so uh, kapha people and pitta people can't eat, water people can, can't eat. Salty, I mean, this, digress, the, this diagram says it uh, very well. Um, maybe I can send slides. So yeah, if you don't mind, they will have it, right? Okay. Yeah, water people got all the good stuff. The sweet, the sour, and the salty. I know, right? Yeah, yeah. They can eat. I mean, that's and they can they move around. Do. They have to eat more oh, okay. because the air should. They, they're dry. <laughs> Basically, they're dry. Okay. So food is a medicine, and that is why traditionally the plate is full of six tastes, right? But eat in moderation. Okay, so what is Ayurveda like? So Ayurveda also uh, talks about the nature clock. We have to do what we do in a day. Our lifestyle management should be around this clock. If we follow this, if we follow eating, then we are uh, at least in balance. So what it is? This clock uh, is based on sunrise 6 uh, a.m. and sunset 6 p.m. That's not always the case. That's why we have to follow the seasonal changes. So from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. is kapha time. So that time you wake up. If you sleep more at that time, kapha in the body increases. Then 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. is a pitta time. That's a noon time when the sun goes up. It's heat that goes, that's in the nature. And that affects us too. So that is a good time for us to eat, okay? You can eat largest meal at that time and it will be, it will get digested better than you eat later, okay? Then 2 p.m. to 10, uh, sorry, 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. is vata time. So that's, that's the time that you do some creative activities um, and, and whatever the projects you have, you can do at that time. And 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. is, again, kapha time. 
So that is also the you, you if you sleep early, too early, then that's the problem too. But if you sleep too late, after 10 p.m. is pitta, pitta time, and you probably notice it. If you sleep late, you can't sleep. You will toss and turn a little bit because that's not the time. It will take time for you to sleep. But you sleep early, it, you will sleep better because that's the, the proper time. Then 2 a.m. to, again, this is a cycle. 2 a.m. to 6 uh, a.m. is water time. Okay? Then Ayurveda also have a seasonal chart, which this chart goes by Vata season, Pitta season, and Kapha season. So this, this is uh, not uh, like uh, seasons here like um, summer or fall or, or spring or winter. They're related, but Ayurveda's uh, season, uh, seasons are Pitta season, uh, Vata season, and Kapha season. So that is the reason, Kapha season, which is uh, November, December, September, October, sorry, what I'm looking at. So here, 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 right. So in this uh, Kapha season, I mean, this is uh, this is a more uh, of a Vata season, October, November, September, October, November is more Vata season because air is dry. Uh, and 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 uh, that is why our skin gets dry, the the whole body gets dry, uh, and then from December to February there is still water season a little bit, and then the kapha season starts half of the January to um, half of May is the kapha time, and then pitta time is uh, half of the. June here and until until August and a little bit of September and that's where we have to make sure what is our body type and what are we doing in that seasonal time that particular time and that is the lifestyle management actually in Ayurveda so self-care and prevention is important uh, balancing of doshas and tune up with the nature. That means tune up your your body balance with the nature, uh, whatever the season is. Purification and the seasonal cleansing uh, is important in Ayurveda. It's called Panchakarma. Have you heard Panchakarma? Um, for any time that you get your doshas get imbalanced, the first thing Ayurveda recommends is cleansing. Just do cleansing and get them out. All the to toxins, get them out before you start the treatment. So every season, there's a seasonal uh, uh, cleansing. So it is uh, now uh, spring is coming. So before spring, you need to cleanse your body because um, in Vata season, we eat too much warm and too much food. Uh, and that's heavy, so that's why the cleansing is important. Um, balanced food according to constitution is always important. Herbs to balance, there are, there are plenty of herbs. Um, in Ayurveda, there, there are herbs or the medicine for, for everything. Um, then herbal massage to center yourself and balance the mind. Because Ayurveda doesn't only recommend the herbs or medicine, but it also recommends Meditation, yoga, massages, therapies, um, yoga asanas, and exercise. This is monkey mind. <laughs> but to stabilize our multitasking monkey, uh, monkey mind, we always have to laugh, and, and uh, that is medicine. Laughing is medicine. So yoga and pranayama play a very important role uh, in Ayurveda and there is a lot of research has been done now. Uh, pranayama, yoga, asana reduce symptoms of depression. This uh, research is done uh, in Bangalore. There is a institute, uh, National Institute of Research. And uh, it's called Nimhans. It's a big in, in 
in Bangalore. Mm -hmm. That's where all the Wonderful. research yeah. has been done. Uh, when people ask me about the research, uh, what happens is this science is originated in India. So a lot of researches are done in India, and I'm not here. Here they're doing it now, but very minimum. Harvard, uh, they, they did a lot of studies in yoga and pranayama. Hatha yoga is used equivalent to psychotherapy, actually, in reducing pain and aches. Uh, yoga and breathing improves memory and learning capacity. So breathing uh, in the morning before yoga, it's, it's really um, good for your learning capacity. And also it improves digestion. Hatha yoga reduces anxiety and depression in normal adults. Deep breathing, which is valuable in, to manage pain because we have capacity to manage pain. We, we, we don't learn it because we have Tylenol ready on the desk <laughs> always, and we don't think about it, but you, you can experiment. When you go home, experiment these things and you will see the difference. That it is originated, it is in our mind. So if we have those coping skills ourselves, do some pranayama that, uh, that reduces pain, there are uh, some pressure point therapies, uh, did the massage, head massage, uh, and then positive state of mind always. <laughs> meditation, meditation is used and uh, I, I work in uh, mental health and uh, addiction facilities and uh, meditation is very, uh, very much proven for, uh, for anxiety, the relief in anxiety. Uh, chronic insomnia, when people do meditation morning and evening, they sleep better and they, they don't need that much of sleeping pills that they do. Uh, overall emotional well-being, meditation is good. And in, in, and it increases focus and concentration. So some of the, some schools, they started uh, mindfulness meditation here too. If, um, if you want to uh, learn more about it, uh, there is uh, Raja Ayurveda in Iowa, and they started this meditation uh, maybe 25, 30 years ago in the United States, and they start in whole Iowa city. I think there is a time, like 12 to 12.30 or something, everything closes in the city and everybody does meditation. Ayurveda, uh, we, we learned this, uh, why I have this slide again, okay. So Ayurveda also has so many therapies and these are the, the therapies which now people say that Ayurvedic spa, but it is not actually spa. Those are the real Ayurveda therapies for longevity and those therapies are used in uh, illnesses as well. So this is uh, Nasya. So nasya and neti, now it's used in, um, in uh, sinus problems. If you go to your ENT doctor, they will tell you, because what is the solution otherwise? They'll give you antibiotic, right? And then antibiotic again, but this, this doesn't go away because uh, you know why you have the, the sinus problem, right? Because of the septum, deviated septum. So unless you do surgery, but um, this Nasya kit that you, uh, sorry, uh, Nati kit that you get in CVS and, and Walgreens, where that came from, now your ENT doctor, your doctor also, primary care doctor suggests that. Why don't you get the, uh, the Nati kit, right? That is uh, Ayurvedic, Ayurvedic. That, that therapy is Ayurvedic. And uh, I think, uh, I don't, I don't recall the name. The doctor is also Indian. Matt Indian, Indian Matt doctor Matt from, from so California. Dr. Matt or something from California. From California. Yeah. Yeah. So um, this Shirodhara. Shirodhara is a, a great therapy for any kind of mind illnesses, anxiety, depression, or just for the rejuvenation. And it's proven. Um, 
then um, reflexology called ref Ayurvedic reflexology is, is totally different than the reflexology what we practice here. So there are marble points which has connection to your brain. Uh, and that is why uh, the feet massage is, is very important and it works. Then um, there is Abhyanga. There are so many types of therapies and massages. Therapies for um, back pain, therapies for ear, uh, therapies for eyes, uh, therapies for dental care. Ayurveda is good about prevention uh, therapies. And that's why, uh, I don't know if you remember or how many of you lived in India for, for a longer time, but uh, um, it was a ritual in India to pour a few drops of oil in your ear and your yep. nose yep. and massage your eyes. And why? Because there was a reason. And that's why people don't have glasses in very early age because with the massage, it promotes the, um, it gives the toning to your muscles, right? Um, and our uh, mind body both needs good cleansing. So the cleansing that we talk about is not just for the body. Mind cleansing is also important. What is mind cleansing? What do we do for mind cleansing? We have all the thoughts in our mind that we don't get rid of. They're there. That's why we remember so much bad things, right? Sometimes because we don't do mind cleansing. We talk about toxins and cleansing. So what is mind cleansing? That is why the breathing and meditation and yoga is important. Yes. Uh, if you say about the body cleansing, what does that mean? Like every season do the both body Toxins, cleansing. okay. So let's talk about garbage can, right? We put garbage in the garbage can every day. Unless you wash that can, that can is not clean. It, it remains there, some few substances every day. And then it smells one day, don't you think that happens in our body? Yes, it does. What do we eat? Do we eliminate the whole thing every day? We go to the toilet two times every day? No, not completely. It doesn't evacuate completely. Those substances remain in our body. And over the years, over the time, what happens with that? The same happens with that garbage can. That kachra smells, right? The same thing in our body happens. Same thing in our mouth happens. That is why cleansing is what that cleansing does, um, and Ayurved uh, calls it ama. Ama is that toxic substance. But why that cholesterol deposits? Why? That's ama in your body. So how because to do that? How to do that cleansing? There's a there is a separate chapter oh. of Panchakarma. It is a three days cleansing. It's five days cleansing. Twenty one days cleansing. When people are now um, people uh, now uh, people go to India just for Panchakarma. Does it mean fasting or something? Fasting is important too. It includes fasting. Oh. So when you fast and you drink more warm water, your body detoxes. The same thing. Okay. When you clean your pots every day, right? It is the same thing. In, in the mouth too, we don't think of gargling that we used to do in India a long time back. So I don't think people do. That is important because that uh, gives toning to the muscles inside our mouth. Um, so there was oil pulling, it's called olive pulling. With the oil, do the gargle and the, the, that oil is medicated oil. So that um, has capacity to heal your gums uh, uh, retain enamel of your teeth and also um, it's more antibacterial that's why it was there so flush out the toxins with one day three days or five days or 21 days cleansing and mind cleansing uh, or peaceful but mind cleansing is also important for peaceful mind so this is this is what I was talking about dental wellness ear and eye care, nose care, neti, nasya. It was a part of ritual when we were small. And then also, um, 
when the baby is born in India, they do all the rituals, right? Abhyanga, Abhyanga Snanam, the uh, ear drops and, and uh, oil drops in, in nose, right? And uh, massage hair. Why? Because to nourish that child, right? And the same thing we have to do on time to time basis too. Because this is a space, ear is a space and that gets dry, right? It needs oil. We always think, we always think that the machines time need- Time check, just time check. Okay, yeah, so yeah. Couple minutes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we always think that our machines need oiling, our machines, uh, our, our, uh, our car needs oil, and also um, whatever the machines in our house, we, we think that they need uh, maintenance, right? And we have ticket on our fridge always for the maintenance, maintenance of our car, maintenance of our heating system, blah, blah, blah. But we don't think about maintenance of our body. It's very simple. It's very simply dis defined in Ayurveda. Do a bhyanga, do a um, uh, head massage, put some oil in your nose, ear, gentle oil pulling. Okay, so that's actually Ayurveda's uh, prevention and illness management. It's, uh, the concept is prevention is better than cure. So the lifestyle management, dosha management, we go to doctor and do physical. What doctor does? Just take some parameters, right? And they tell you you're good or bad. They don't tell you what to do for prevention and balance yourself and mind and body, no. That is really important. If you are in balance, I don't think it, it takes time for you to get sick. Just like you are 10 people sitting here and one of you have few symptoms. Knock on the wood, it's not there today. But if one is sick, some people will walk away, nothing happens, they're not sick. Some people walk away, they're sick one or two days, some people walk away, they, they're sick for seven days, and some people may be on the bed for like 15 days. Why? Because their balances are in, and imbalances are different. Immunity is another thing. This is a whole chapter. That Im, if you don't have that strong immune system, you get sick um, very now and then. So this is the prescription that I have for you. <laughs> okay, and then I will send the slides where I have some simple uh, herbs to take for rejuvenation, day-to-day -day basis for prevention, for increasing immunity, and inflammation is a big area. Inflammation causes uh, every problem that you have is inflammation in the body. Uh, and there are some remedies um, for sore throat and cold and cough. Do we have one minute? Yeah, whoever wants to stay can stay. That's yeah. okay. You can go ahead. Okay. So this is a marma therapy for just principal. Just uh, if you want to do it for just two minutes. Close your mind and uh, uh, sorry, uh, close your eyes. But just um, uh, remember these points. If you don't remember, open your eyes. <laughs> okay. So um, the the center point is. Here. Uh, just press that point three times, four times, five times. Okay. And then come down underneath your eyebrows just with two hands, two points, and, uh, and press it. And then go down to the eyebrow, end of the eyebrow. And then press it. You have probably done when your grandma said when you had a headache, right? Press here and headache goes away. Right. Okay. And then down here, down the eyebrow. Okay.
right? So you can use it in day-to-day -day life. Thank you. And if you want, I have a, my herbal line, books to read, and I'm Thank you. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you so much.